Welcome back to FHM. We're here at the Bait Lab, and we are going to take a little bit of time and talk about options for choosing floats for vertical presentation, and or we'll talk a little bobber dogging as well. Means jigs, beads, bait suspended under a float, whatever you choose or prefer based on confidence. It all comes down to confidence and things that you've used in the past to see if you have success. If you're fairly new to steelhead fishing and or actually changing it up, getting out of drift fishing, pulling plugs, a variety of things. Maybe perhaps you've been a hardware or spinner tosser for years, want to start doing a little float fishing to cover water. Uh, some great options. You got to understand, you know, basically what the float is telling you as far as weight and uh, what that number actually means and then how much weight to suspend under your float. For me, it starts with recognizing how big a presentation you're going to put on that uh, presentation, as in the size of your jig. Is it a 16th ounce? Is it an 8th ounce? Are you fishing bigger water, higher flows, a little more turbidity in the water, and, and, and you're trying to target fish at the upper ends of holes and the soft edge, as an example, and you want to use a little more weight to get that presentation down. So maybe using a, a 3 8 ounce jig you know, can I put that on a 5 8 ounce float? Probably not. So you scale up from the size of presentation you're going to do. If I'm using a 3 8 ounce jig, first of all, let's look here at the table. I have a number of floats out here on display, and I have some pre-attached weights on the bottom of them just so we can walk through the progression. One thing I can tell you is that clear floats, for example, they may come in grams versus ounces and I left my phone of course at the desk so I can't demonstrate that but how do we convert uh, grams to ounces it's pretty simple in that I simply enter into my phone uh, how many ounces is 35 grams and it's going to basically give me a number it'll tell me right there how many ounces is 35 grams uh, I wrote it on here so you can see you can do that with any float that says you know 25 grams how many ounces is 25 grams use your phone make the math easy 35 grams is approximately one and a quarter ounces okay one and a quarter ounces is a pretty decent sized float to use for steelhead fishing but if I'm in the uh, if I'm in that faster water that I was talking about and want to make sure my presentation is getting down and I'm going to hang a bigger weight off of there maybe fish that that 3 8 ounce jig nice big presentation big profile perhaps I'm out on the coast later season big aggressive uh, buck steelhead coming out near structure I want to get that down and in their face make them angry make them come after it so I have to uh, utilize a presentation float and weight system that's going to work well with a 3 8 ounce jig uh, I'm going to use something like this ounce and a quarter and I'm going to match that up with a three quarter ounce weight when I do that math and I have a three quarter ounce weight and a three eighths ounce jig I'm only a quarter ounce less than what the float is is rated for which typically makes that float right in the water column right at the level that I want to see it just barely enough of the top coming out to where I can see it it's going to be vertical in the water you know it's not going to be laying over it's got enough weight to pull it down and keep it keep it nice and vertical so Again, it's just a simple math thing. When I'm uh, utilizing a 25 gram, as I throw that into my phone, because I can't do the math, because I'm not Canadian, and I, and I learned uh, math in public school, so I'm doing the best I can. I'm gonna use the phone. It tells me that that is in and around three quarters of an ounce. Pretty much a decent sized float to use for steelhead fishing, three quarters of an ounce. I'm going to hang off of that a 5 8 ounce weight, anticipating that I'm probably going to use an 8 ounce jig. When I, when I do that math, you know, for me it's simple. I look at three quarters and I look at 5 8 okay? If I take my three quarters and convert that number to a six, basically you're saying that you have six eighths. If I put a 5 8 weight underneath it, that's 1 8 less than what the float's rated for. I couple that with an 8 ounce jig head, and I'm right there at basically 3 quarters of an ounce, if you follow the math that I'm saying. So that's no different than these, uh, these uh, foam floats by Bomac. I like using these. These torpedo style floats work great. They ride in the water at a real nice level. I'm going to take that three quarters of an ounce. I'm going to double that top number, make it a six. At six eighths, five eighths, add an eighth ounce jig. I'm basically right there. 
I don't do that every time. Some, I like to be within the parameter. For me, over the years of fishing and realizing what your float's doing, it is anywhere from an eighth ounce to a quarter ounce as far as the weight you're hanging underneath the float. Sometimes I like that variable, you know, so when I add those up, I'm not actually equal to exactly what the float is. I may be an eighth ounce less than what the float's rated for, which is fine. Ideally, what we're trying to do is you look at the colors on those floats, okay? And I'm gonna show it here on the overhead. Uh, when this is riding in the water and it's weighted at its rated weight, three quarters of an ounce, you're gonna see that that white is probably right at the top of the water. You're gonna just see the top of that float coming out. When I lessen that weight by an eighth of an ounce, I really can see some of the black on the very top of that float. Now, when that's riding along in the water, and if it's a real calm piece of water, maybe it's really cold, the fish aren't real aggressive, they're just kinda kinda maybe mouth at it a little bit, pulled around. If that float changes elevation at all, albeit slow, I'm gonna see it because the white on that float against the black contrast, if the line, if my finger is the water line, as that float moves up and down, you're gonna see that contrasting color. If I overweight my float and all I'm seeing basically is the very top of that float, if there's any movement on that, it's really hard to pick up on that from a distance away. I guarantee you when you're, when you're back, if you're fishing out of a boat or off the bank, and if you've weighted your float appropriately, you're gonna see that that water line is, uh, is performing, or that float line is performing in the water to where you can see any little subtle movement. You can see when small fish are, are grabbing at it. You can see what's going on with your float. So matching your, your weight to your float in ounces, doing the math from your presentation up to the weight and to equal or just be about an eighth of an ounce less than what the float is weighted for is gonna be your most, most success. Um, and that works for any size float, okay? It doesn't matter what it's rated for, you're gonna match the weight. Here, I've actually gone with a 5 8 and I put a 3 8 uh, underneath it. I had an eighth ounce jig, basically 3 8 plus an eighth ounce jig is 4 8 eighths. 4 8 eighths underneath it on a 5 8 weighted float. Basically, I'm 1 8 less than the, uh, what the float's rated for, and that's gonna work just fine. Remember, on our bobber dogging floats, these are not designed to fish vertically. Okay, these are basically rigged completely different. These floats are gonna slide uh, on our top shot of line. It has a stopper, typically eight feet up on the line. This for demonstration purposes is right here. I put an indicator bead that always tells me I'm maxed out against my stop. I put a protection bead underneath it. And this just goes right to a basic uh, barrel swivel with a lock. And um, that's what we're hanging our, our lead off of. Of course, if, uh, if you follow us, you know we like to use our stick leads on our crane swivels below our barrel swivel. That um, is how we rig that. So again, this flat bottom float, albeit it's cupped, is not made to fish in a vertical presentation. Unlike these floats here with an inline sinker, that is a vertical presentation. This is a barber dog float, should be going down the river lying on its side if you've rigged it appropriately. So, a few things to think about when you're rigging your float. And I'm gonna walk you through the real quick process here. This is my top shot. It's a uh, 20 pound um, or 15 pound I've put on. I'm probably running 30 pound braid and I got a 15 or 20 pound top shot depending on time of year I'm fishing and if we're going after hatchery fish or uh, wild fish, okay? So, first thing we're gonna do is you gotta have your bobber stop. Now, if you haven't used these Bomac bobber stops before, I highly recommend that you do. For monofilament, they work great. They come on a little ring. You have this rubber bobber stop. You simply put the line through the eye at the top, pull that tight against there, as you can see, and now we're just gonna work that right off of the wire, and now it's on your line. So now all you have to do is simply slide that up, get it out of your way. Okay, now, Got to chase my stuff around here. Before I put the float on, I like to put my indicator. That just always tells me from a distance, I can see that my float is maxed out. So that indicator goes on. And uh, sometimes when you put that little, when you put that little stopper on there, it crimps your line, makes it tough to get through the float. So you just cut that end off, straighten it out. Now we're gonna put our half ounce float on. If I can feed that on through there. 
Real simple, guys. Half ounce float, slide that up the line, okay? Underneath that, I'm gonna put a bead. This bead goes on the line next. This is what the float rides against when it's sitting at the bottom. And so it doesn't, uh, the float isn't constantly beating against your uh, knot, okay? You don't want the float sliding down and just hammering on your knot. So you put that protection bead in there, rides over the knot, float comes down, hits against the uh, bead. So now I have a half ounce float. I got a 3 8 ounce inline sinker. These are great because they're swiveled at both ends. That, uh, that works very well. It, it really prevents line twists. So we're just gonna tie this on here real quick. So this is an inline sinker for your inline vertical presentation. Underneath this, we are going to uh, hang a jig. And again, doing the math, I got a half ounce float. I put a uh, three eighths, three eighths uh, inline sinker. And we'll secure that up like that, okay? So now, the weight is on there. If I slide all this down, all right. Now that is one way to rig that. Okay. And we can uh, tie a leader and a jig on the bottom end of that. But that there is a sliding float. And if I'm going to, if I'm going to fish that all day long and constantly use a sliding float, that's great. Okay. But there are certain times where you want to make sure you can fish a fixed float and or a sliding float. And it's a real easy adjustment. All you have to do before you tie your weight on, Okay, so you take your bead back off. Let's use a second bobber stop. Instead of rubber bands or any type of crimping or anything else, you simply put on, oh, excuse me, my bead fell off. Put the bead on, okay? Put the bead on now, put on your bobber stop. We're gonna cinch that on there, okay? Now I'm gonna tie that weight back on there. We got time, we'll just do this real quick. I want to show you guys, because some guys get a little confused in that, um, you know, I want to fish a, a sliding float, I want to fish a fixed float, I take two rods, not necessary. If you're just starting out bobber fishing, you may think that that's exactly what you need to do, but I'm, I'm telling you, it's very easy with a simple little bobber stop to accomplish both of those, and it works fantastic, okay? So that is, that's our weight tight on there. Now. That bottom bobber stop, we're gonna move all the way down, okay? And let me pick this up. So there is, there is weight, there is the bobber stop, there's the bead, there's the top bead, and I'll go up the line here. I'm gonna get my top bobber stop. Now, if I'm fishing this vertically, I got a jig hanging underneath there at about 18 inches a liter and I set this to stop a couple feet up. When I cast that out and that sinks down, that is gonna stop against the bobber stop. That's my presentation going through the water column, okay? When I reel in a cast, it's gonna gather line, it's gonna slide through, it's gonna do exactly what a slipping float wants, you know, what it should do. The one thing about a slip float when you're fishing jigs, sometimes as you're mending your line and you're holding back a little bit, keeping your line up off the water, you can actually, um, by holding back too much, you actually draw the line through your float and it pulls your jig up and out of the water column at the level you've set it unbeknownst to you. It's just because you're trying to finesse that jig down, down, the, down the seam and you're holding back in that rod just enough and you don't really understand or can't see that, you can't see that line sliding through there, but what it's doing is it's raising your presentation as it travels down river because you're holding back a little too much. If you want to alleviate that problem, you simply use that second stop underneath, okay? So now you're gonna set this as a fixed float. And by bringing those two together, I can hold back on that all day long, and as long as that floats in the water, your depth is set. Now keep in mind, I got a jig under here about 18 inches, okay? Um, so now I'm fishing a fixed float, and that's not gonna move because it's stopped in between those two uh, bobber stops. So whether you wanna fish it fixed 
or by simply leaving this down here by your swivel, now you're fishing a slider float. You basically have the best of both worlds in one rigging or presentation, and you're gonna be much more successful in your jig presentation, your uh, beads under a float, whether you're fishing worms, um, inverted, whatever type of presentation you want under your float, it all works, doesn't matter if you use it fixed or sliding, the fact is you've thought it out ahead of time and you rig this so that it can be either or, okay? Hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight how to match your weight to your float, gives you opportunity to fish it either fixed or sliding, and hopefully you'll find some success on the river. <music>